At the time of this video, Bitcoin miners make $27 million per day, which adds up to almost $10 billion annually. In this video, you will learn about the entire business side of Bitcoin mining, including how miners make money, the different components of the industry, the most lucrative strategies, and more. Let's start with a basic explanation of what Bitcoin mining is. Bitcoin mining is the process that allows new transactions to be added to the Bitcoin blockchain, a public ledger of every Bitcoin transaction. Miners are paid every time they add a new block, a batch of transactions, to the blockchain. Their payment consists of two parts. The block subsidy, which is newly created Bitcoin, think of this as Bitcoin's inflation, and transaction fees. This is a payment from users to miners for including their transaction in the block. Transaction fees can vary wildly, but we'll get into that later. In order to add blocks to the chain, miners undergo a process called proof of work. Technical jargon aside, what miners do is they input the transactions and some other data through an algorithm many times over until the output of the algorithm is less than or equal to a certain number. Simply put, they are playing a giant game of guess and check. The first miner to guess correctly and find a valid output adds the next block to the chain, gets paid, and everyone starts guessing for the next block after that. In order to guess as many times as possible, miners have developed specialized computers known as ASICs. The only thing these computers are capable of doing is running the SHA-256 algorithm for Bitcoin mining, but they do so very effectively. There's so much to talk about when it comes to ASICs, far too much for this video, but the high level is that these machines are very powerful and they consume a lot of energy. The two most important specs of an ASIC are hash rate, which is measured in terahash per second, this tells you how powerful the machine is and how much revenue you can expect it to earn. And energy efficiency, which is measured in watts per terahash. This tells you how much energy the machine consumes per hash and gives you an idea of how much it will cost to operate the machine. The newest ASIC on the market, the Antminer S21 Pro, has a hash rate of 234 terahash per second. This means it can run the SHA-256 algorithm 234 trillion times per second and it has an energy efficiency of 15 watts per terahash. In total, the S21 Pro consumes 3,510 watts, which is roughly the same amount of electricity as 10 household refrigerators. So to recap, Bitcoin miners are competing to add blocks to the blockchain as there is a large financial reward for doing so, and they have developed high-powered computers to help them do this. And one more point before we really get into the weeds is... Unlike other commodities such as gold, copper, or oil, an increase in production capacity dedicated towards Bitcoin mining does not mean that more Bitcoin will get mined, nor will Bitcoin get mined at a faster rate. If the price of gold increases and more people start mining for gold, more gold will get mined. This is not the case for Bitcoin mining due to a key feature of the Bitcoin protocol known as the difficulty adjustment. No matter how much computational power is dedicated towards Bitcoin mining, new blocks will always take 10 minutes on average to get mined. This feature combined with Bitcoin's quadrennial halvings are what enables the hard supply cap of 21 million Bitcoin. Now that you know the basics, let's dive further down the rabbit hole. Like I mentioned before, the miner that adds each new block receives the entire payment for that block, the block subsidy and the transaction fees. It is a winner take all scenario. This obviously poses a significant risk factor for miners because you earn nothing if you don't mine any blocks and you're competing against many other miners all around the world. In order to mitigate the risk of finding a block on their own, miners combine their hash power into what's known as pools. There are various types of pools, which we explain in detail in another video, but for the sake of this video, we will focus on the most common type, which is an FPPS pool. Miners that contribute their hash power to an FPPS pool are paid using the hash price formula, which is equal to dollars per terahash per day. This allows miners to receive payment proportional to the amount of hash rate that they are contributing to the pool, inclusive of transaction fees. The pool pays the miners out regardless of if blocks are mined or not, and the pool takes 2% of the revenue in exchange for incurring the risk of finding a block. But this is not an issue for large FPPS pools as they have more than enough hash power to mine blocks on a relatively consistent basis. Bitcoin miners are able to make a profit when the dollar value of the Bitcoin that they mine is greater than what it costs in electricity to run their machines. If a miner can mine $20 worth of Bitcoin in a day while only spending $15 on electricity, that's a win. 
Over time, miners accumulate these daily profit margins until they recoup the initial cost of their machines, at which point all of the mining profits afterward are gravy on top. Where things get really interesting for miners is during Bitcoin bull markets. The miner that was earning $20 worth of Bitcoin per day may blink and all of a sudden they're mining $30 worth of Bitcoin per day, but they're still paying just $15 in electricity costs. The fixed nature of mining's operational costs mean that in this example, a 1.5x increase in the price of Bitcoin resulted in a 2x increase in profit margins for the miner. At Blockware, we call this phenomenon the mining profit multiple. Now, you're probably thinking, that's great and all, but I don't want a dozen of these machines running in my garage, nor is my power rate low enough to justify it. That's where we introduce the next core component of the mining industry, hosting. From a miner's perspective, this is a fantastic and necessary service. It allows you to mine with more favorable economics, and you can also avoid the time and capital requirements necessary to set up the data center infrastructure yourself. From the host's perspective, this is great because it allows them to diversify their lines of revenue. On top of mining Bitcoin themselves, they can leverage their mining infrastructure and low cost power to capture a slight spread on the energy rate they charge hosted clients compared to the rate they pay to the power company. Everybody wins. So you've acquired ASICs, you found a hosting provider with a low power rate, and you're ready to start mining Bitcoin. But before you proceed, you want to know how much you can expect to earn doing so. Before I show you how to calculate this, you need to know one more thing, transaction fees. Remember earlier when I said transaction, transaction fees, fees can, can vary, vary wildly? wildly? That's because the fee market in Bitcoin is entirely free and open. There is no central coordinator who determines what the fee rate is to send Bitcoin on the network. It's purely a function of supply and demand, exactly like you learned in economics class. Just as the Bitcoin supply is capped at 21 million, the size of each Bitcoin block is capped at roughly four megabytes worth of data. And given the limited space within each block, not every single transaction can be included all at once. And thus, the fee market functions like an auction. Users bid to have miners include their transactions within blocks. Miners, being the rational profit-seeking market participants that they are, tend to include the highest paying transactions within each block. If a large number of people suddenly want to transact on Bitcoin all at the same time, users are going to have to pay very high fees to outbid each other. This tends to take place during bull markets. On the inverse, if hardly anybody is trying to send Bitcoin on chain, like during a bear market, then fees are going to be near zero. Historically, transaction fees have been a relatively insignificant portion of total Bitcoin mining revenue, but that is poised to change as Bitcoin adoption increases and demand for on-chain transactions rises accordingly. In the long term, fees will become the only source of revenue for miners as the halvings send the block subsidy to zero. During that time, revenue will likely become more unpredictable for Bitcoin miners, but that's quite a few years down the road and we'll have to see how things develop in the meantime. Now, let's recap everything we've learned so far. Miners are competing to add new blocks to the chain. There is a large financial prize for doing so. Right now, it's 3.125 Bitcoin plus however many transaction fees are in the block. Miners use specialized computers to mine for the blocks. These computers are called ASICs. Miners pool their hash power to mine blocks and then split the reward. Miners need low cost power so their revenue is greater than their costs. With this knowledge, let's take a look at an example of how much a Bitcoin miner is earning right now in the current market conditions. At the time of this video, the price of Bitcoin is roughly $60,000 and hash price is at 4.1 cent per terahash per day. Let's use an Antminer S21 Pro for our example. And let's say this machine has a power rate of 7.8 cent per kilowatt hour. We can calculate the daily revenue of the S21 Pro by multiplying its hash rate times hash price. 234 times 0 0.041 means the S21 Pro mines roughly $9.60 worth of Bitcoin per day. At 15 watts per terahash, the S21 Pro consumes 3.51 kilowatts of power. 3.51 times 7.8 cent per kilowatt hour times 24 hours equals roughly $6.57 per day. So it costs roughly $6.57 to run an S21 per day, and it mines roughly $9.60 worth of Bitcoin. This is a net daily profit of roughly $3.03. Over the course of one month, this equates to roughly $90 in total profits, and over the course of one year, it is roughly $1,100 in profits. But there's a large probability that the price of Bitcoin will be much higher a year from now than it is today. 
the fact that the Fed just started lowering interest rates, the ETFs are buying thousands of Bitcoin per day, and we just had another halving relatively recently, are all setting the stage for a bullish year in 2025. Let's look at the economics of an Antminer S21 Pro, but with different circumstances. We'll start with a conservative estimate and say the price of Bitcoin hits $100,000 per coin next year. We'll also assume that hash rate and mining difficulty rises as well. Right now, the total network hash rate is roughly 640 exahash, but let's say it hits 700. And lastly, we'll assume that because this is a bull market, on-chain fees rise as well to become roughly 5% of total miner revenue. This confluence of factors would put hash price at 6.4 cent per terahash per day. Going back to our formula, cost is based off the energy consumption of the ASIC and power cost. Neither of these have changed, so the daily cost is still 657 for the S21 Pro. However, at the new hash price, the S21 Pro would mine roughly $14.98 worth of Bitcoin per day. Total daily profits have jumped to $8.41, monthly profits to 252 and annual profits to roughly $3,069. This is quite the difference, and this is using a very low bar estimate for the Bitcoin price. But what if the price goes higher than $100,000? Many analysts believe this to be the case. What if Bitcoin goes to $250,000? All things considered, this is still a relatively low bar estimation, as a $250,000 Bitcoin price this cycle would be less than half of the returns from the previous cycle, and would give Bitcoin a market cap of just over $5 trillion, which is less than half of gold's market cap. In this instance, we'll also assume difficulty rises by more as well. We'll call it 800 exahash. We'll again assume an additional 5% in revenue from transaction fees, resulting in a hash price of 14.1 cent per terahash per day. The new daily Bitcoin mining revenue is $33 for a net daily profit of around $26. Net monthly profit will be 793 and net yearly profits will be roughly $9,643. As you can see from these calculations, Bitcoin miners perform extremely well during Bitcoin bull markets. If you're bullish on Bitcoin, mining can be one of the best ways to position yourself to capitalize. Everything we discussed in this video can be categorized as quote unquote, pure play Bitcoin mining. However, large scale miners have a few other creative ways of generating revenue. Demand response programs where they sell energy back to the grid, HPC slash AI computing, and more. But those are topics for another video. If you found this content insightful, make sure to like and subscribe.